Hey everyone, welcome to the new episode, uh, the fifth episode so far of Make Live. I'm Tyler Weingarner, and today I'm joined by Matt Saltz. Uh, so, Matt Saltz, you are our digital fabrication um, expert here at Make Magazine. You're our sure. editor, you run our digital fabrication review. That only has a little bit to do with the project we're working on today because otherwise, you. Well, the project we're building today is the PyCon Raspberry Pi powered telescope, and uh, it's a project that you worked on. Uh, yeah, I. I... I started redesigning some of the parts to make them a little bit easier to uh, find uh, pieces here in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, to make them, although we're, we're, we're still working on some of that. Yeah, so this is a project. Um, do you remember the name of the, 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 guy, the guy who originally developed this project? I don't. Uh, well, good we've thing. Got it. Yeah, we've got it uh, here uh, with us. Uh, my apologies. Uh, but uh, So this project was originally developed in the U.K., and it is based entirely around 3D printed parts and... Well, plumbing parts. This is uh, a, a, a piece of PVC plumbing pipe, uh, and this forms the body of the telescope. And you can see, look down, you can see right now, um, yes, yeah, so this forms the body of the telescope, and this is a type of PVC pipe that is very common in Europe and the UK, not so easy to find right. here. Five, five inch internal diameter PVC, which here in the US, four inches is really popular. Uh, eight inches is really popular, but or well, not really popular, but findable. But five inches is is it's kind of difficult to get. Right. Um, so you're working on redesigning the parts so that you uh, so that people can more easily build this here. You right. can purchase this online if you go shopping in you know online European hardware store things yeah. like that. And, and they'll send you the entire kit. And if you find some specialty PVC suppliers, you can definitely get the PVC uh, here in the U.S. That is five inch internal diameter, but you know we're we're just we're working on trying to trying to find some ways to make it a little bit easier to source parts here in the U.S. Yeah, that's the other important thing to talk about with regards to this project is that there are a number of ways to go about building it. Um, as you know, because this is a completely maker based project, you can uh, look up the PyCon website. You can download all the STL files that you can print at home, and then uh, get your own Raspberry Pi, get the Pi camera, get the cable, and then you're off and building. Um, you know, provided you can get access to and you know find the correct size PVC pipe, um, you can also buy this uh, project as a kit. They will have printed all the parts for you. They have to send you the pipe. Um, you can paint the inside black because it's normal interior white color PVC, and that's not good for um, astrophotography or, or uh, stargazing or anything like that. Paint the inside black, and you're you're good to go. Um, or you can also buy this as a completely built kit straight from them. You, they ship you the, the finished telescope, and uh, you're you're ready to start looking at the stars. And, and there's a couple tricky bits in the the system that they when you buy the pre-built kit, you know they they already do uh, for you. Like the the camera module itself will turn on an LED every time it t it tries to take a picture. Well. You're, you know, you're trying to capture minute amounts of light. That's how a telescope works. So you got to black out that LED. And you know, if you buy the kit from them, they already sell it with the the LED painted black. So you don't have to worry about, you know, how opaque is my my paint? Am I using the right thing to make this this happen? Yeah. Uh, it just comes ready to go. And we've actually already got. Uh, I was going to say, if you have any questions for us. Uh, regarding this project, put, please put them in the comments below, and we already have one good uh, comment. I don't know the answer to it, but it's uh, uh, good to to look it up. Anyone know if McMaster Car carries this pipe? Um, I don't know if they do. From what I was looking, I did not see it. Okay, uh, good answer there. But but again, there are there are specialty PVC companies that that you can definitely get it from. So you know the internet the internet provides, right? Yeah, uh, and uh, also, of course, Ian Blanchard wants to know if a rubber chicken is required tool for the project. No. At least we don't think so. It's always good to have on hand just in case. And before we go any further, one thing I definitely want to do is make sure to thank our sponsor for the Makes Live series, and that is DigiKey. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, DigiKey is a electronic uh, supplier um, based here in the U.S. Uh, any, um, all, they sell all the electronics components that you need to build this project, the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi camera, and basically anything else you would need for this project or any electronics project. They ship fast. Uh, they're a wonderful partner to have in this series, and we're grateful to have them on board because they make this possible. So thank you, Digikey. They, they've been my go-to sh shop for, for years for ordering components. Yeah. I, best selection great shipping time, yeah. and I can say that because I've been a customer for longer than I've been with Make. Yeah, that's true. They're <laughs> tremendous to work with. And, uh, um, well, this upcoming weekend is Bay Area Maker Fair. They're going to be joining us out there for the event, and I'm really looking forward to actually meeting with, meeting with them in person. So thanks, DigiKey. And, uh, but anyhow, let's get on with uh, building this telescope. And 
Okay. Um, I just wanted to see if we had any more comments. So, um, the components we have here, we mentioned here is the, the PVC body. We're going to set this aside for now. So we don't, we're actually going to need this pretty soon. So let's get this out here front and center. Um, the other components to this. Yeah, there's, there's two main assemblies that, that go into this. There's a, a base that holds the mirror. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the first thing here. We already have this, this partially assembled. Yeah, if let's there's, get a closer look at this guy here. If there's any point of this build that you really need to to pay close attention to what you're doing, it's when mounting this mirror. Um, you know, when, when we start, start talking about uh, telescopes, we're talking about precision uh, optics. And so the, the best you can center this mirror when mounting this mirror to the, the adjustable mount, the better off you are. Yeah. After that, uh, there's spacers that are in here, that, that there's screws and some springs in there so you can actually change the, the height. Where's the camera? Okay. So you can actually change the height of the, the mirror, uh, making sure that those at least start out evenly spaced so if you have to dial things in, you're not dialing from, from wide gradients uh, yeah. really helps. Yeah, and, and then you have all these adjustment screws that are uh, available on the back of this, uh, this cap here that then you can use to make those fine adjustments right. later on. But if your mirror's not centered to begin with, there's, there, there's, there's problems. Yeah, so anyhow, uh, the first thing that we can do is um, actually just go ahead and fit this in here. Um, if you're building this permanently, you would probably want to glue this, um, but right now it actually works with a pretty nice friction fit. Uh, so that's gonna stay pretty stable for us there. Um, and then the next part of the assembly, and actually we have two different parts of this. There's, so this is uh, referred to as the, the spider, uh, and this sits at the open end, and I, as you'll see, we'll, we'll build this in just a moment. Um, it has, has sort of a rack and pinion thing that mounts the Pi camera. Uh, and then the, the, the Raspberry Pi itself is bolted to the outside. And so this uh, basically forms your focusing apparatus. And if you take a look, so this is the one that, uh, come, that is the normal uh, uh, 3D printed uh, design that they, that they either sent to us or you can print your own. And this is the one that Matt designed. So you can see there, there's a pretty considerable size difference uh, for the European PVC pipe and the, the U.S. one. Okay. All right. Here's the rack. The rack you can actually assemble, you can actually insert later on. Yeah. Um, get it here a little bit closer. Um... Ian Blanchard is asking, what level of expertise do you need to assemble this? Uh, it's the, the instructions are actually really easy to follow along with. Um, and so uh, it's, it's, if you can build a piece of IKEA furniture, you're going to be able to put this thing together. Yeah, so we just fit this in here. And there are just a couple of, of uh, grub screws there. I actually need to go in here and grab an Allen key. Straight right back around here. Just so we can get these set screws tightened up. And of course this uh, Allen wrench has some sort of nail polish or something on the long end, so I can't use it for gross getting this uh, threaded in quickly. So just got to take our time with it. Here, I almost got it. All right, so that is, that's a rack and, well, that's the pinion, part of the rack and pinion setup. And then we just attach this handle to the outside. The handle's also 3D printed. And then just have this little acorn nut to secure all that into place. This piece just makes it easy to focus the, the mechanism. Um, again, the, the mirror length, or the mirror size is uh, already has a focal length about the same size as the tube. Um, 
but to be able to truly focus in, being able to move this rack and pinion helps. Yeah. And now we see how the, the rack and pinion sets up. We can just roll this into place. And then it, so there's a little bit of a, a toothed, you know, rubber toothed gear uh, thing and then. It's a GT2 belt. Okay. And this is mostly, well, you probably know this uh, from working with 3D printers and probably having built some yourself. These are all basically 3D printer parts, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. These are the, the, same, um, the same pulleys and the same uh, belt that we use on, on most printers. Yeah. Um, of course, they've been used for countless other things before there were 3D printer parts. Uh, so the next thing we'll attach is the Raspberry Pi camera. And you might notice if you've seen a couple of these things, there's a really critical difference uh, here going on, and that is... That um, so normally there'd be a lens here, um, but because we're already going to be focusing this through the mirror assembly at the back of the telescope, we actually don't need the lens. Um, and I'm, I'm no, uh, well, I am a video, I'm a videographer, but I'm no, I wouldn't call myself a, a professional optician, optics scientist, optical scientist. I don't know the word for that. Um, I mean, there are certainly some lens assemblies where you can focus through two, two lenses, uh, but here we're just focusing through one. So right now you're just seeing the bare sensor. Um, you can just unscrew the lens and it just comes right out. It, it's a little tricky. It is the, the lens is held in with a little bit of like Loctite kind of material. Yeah. So it is, it, you, you gotta be kind of careful, but you, you have to remove that lens. Um, uh, it's easy enough, but just be patient. Yeah, like with all things. And then we hold this. Actually, I probably want to get the ribbon cable installed first. That will probably make our lives easier. So we just. So as you can see here, one side of the ribbon cable has a blue strip on it. That's an insulator. You want to make sure that the, the actual bare connectors are facing down towards the board. Yeah, let's, uh, we'll take a look at the other side of it. There's. The connector side of the ribbon cable, and Shine. there's the insulated, insulated side. And for me, I always just look at what side of the uh, connector the, the actual contacts are on, and that's how I know to align it. But I haven't done enough of these to really have fully internalized which side is which. And then to hold this in place, we just have these little nylon uh, nuts and bolts. And these just go through these whole, these four mounting holes. Nice and non-conductive, and you can't really torque them down too much, so you don't really have to worry about, you know, damaging your board. Although... Um, they like to go missing because they are... Uh, if you drop them... They are little. They're tiny, and you'll never see them again, which I think is exactly what I've done. All right. Maybe this for this build, we'll only have three mounting points. That's good enough. We'll find that other at some point. Um, John Madden asked if uh, PLA is fine for this assembly uh, to print in. Uh, PLA is fine for this assembly and in many ways is great. The only thing that I'm going to war warn you about on PLA is um, uh, if you intend to mount this someplace where it might get some direct sun, uh, like if you're going to have it permanently in, in a window or you know something like that, um, you you could have the potential of having having melt. Um, but normally, you know, normally you're going to be using a telescope at night, right? And so you're not going to really have to worry about you know temperatures too badly. But um, I would just not keep it in in the the window of your your home uh, set up to permanently stargaze out of because uh, it might melt. You mentioned that you can't really torque these down enough, and that's why I'm just using my using the old fingernail screwdriver here. Um, and maybe you can speak, well, I'm sure you can speak to this better than I could, uh, but I tend to find that, um, especially when you're working with um, fairly close tolerances for mechanical parts, um, PLA is just a, has a little bit higher reputation for dimensional accuracy than other other materials, but you, you well, you probably with more exotics than I do. Yeah, so PLA has a lot, le lot less shrink. Um, so it's really great for those uh, those cases where you don't want um, you, you don't want to lose any of those mechanical or, or dimensional accuracy. Um, the the one side of it is is it, it has less give. It's more brittle uh, than 
than ABS, and ABS is easier to kind of post machine and work with later on. Um, so, you know, really see what your setup's like. If you don't have problems printing in ABS, then ABS is probably great. Um, if you do have problems printing in it, then you know, stick with the PLA or look at some other variants. We're also getting a lot of really nice high temp PLAs now um, that have a lot less melt, melt problems. So I, that could be consideration. I was going to say that um, maybe it's just my experience with it, but I also feel like the, the overall quality of um, PLA has been generally improving and it's, not, it's losing its reputation for being quite so brittle of a material. Well, there's, there's a lot of additives that are being added in to try to combat that. So we're seeing a lot of you know, variants out there. There's the PLA, PHA, uh, you know, there's the high temp PLAs. Um, the, the stronger PLAs that, that people are doing. Um, but, yeah, you just know the, know the material that you're using. Right. And um, actually, Matt, could you uh, look in the drawer behind me there and just grab a small screwdriver? There you go. Uh, thank you. A couple questions about printing this in, in PETG. Uh, so PETG is great. Um, the only thing is, is, is some of these components you're going to want to make sure that they're a bit opaque, so you're not getting a light bleed. Um, uh, you know, PETG typically is clear, so if you're you're actually um, uh, printing in PETG some of your your back pieces, you might get light bleed from other sources that's coming up and hitting your camera, and not not necessarily uh, just the light that's being reflected back by the the mirror itself. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is the spider assembly um, relatively complete. Then, um, actually, there's one more thing we need. Oh, found the other uh, nylon screw there. There we go. It found itself wedged right there in the rack and pinion, which would have uh, messed us up real good when we started trying to focus this thing. Now, of course, it is 3 in the afternoon here in San Francisco, um, which means we're not going to be able to do very good stargazing. Um, but one of the features in our new office is that we're looking directly across um, to a set of floor to ceiling windows out to the Embarcadero, uh, which is uh, San Francisco's harbor front street. Um, so without seeming too creepy, we're going to just point the, uh, the telescope right out the window and maybe see some passers-by or uh, take a look at the, uh, get a good close look at the leaves that are on the trees outside or we'll see what else we can see but it will give you a pretty good sense of the level of magnification that this telescope is, is capable of. Um, do you know off the top of your head what the, the magnification factor is? Again, I do not remember. Okay. These are question, questions that I did not bone up on before, before coming here. Been spending more time thinking about designs and expandability. Yeah. Okay. So that's the last part there, and then let's get the... Um, so this is the bracket that we're going to mount the Raspberry Pi onto. This will kind of hang off the outside of the telescope here. Um, it mounts to this point right up here. And we'll just use this screw to thread that on in. So this is one part that you will need to prep uh, as you're, you're preparing. There's a, a printout template for this, but the actual mounting hole is not built into the design. Uh, it's something that you actually need to uh, drill out yourself. Do you know why they didn't um, integrate the drill hole into the design? Absolutely befuddles me. Okay. Well, that's the, that's the interesting thing about community projects is uh, you don't always work on them close together enough to be like, why, why did they design it this way? But that's all right. Um, the aforementioned Raspberry Pi, let's just go ahead and mount that on here now. camera up a little bit. What I probably should have done first, so I'm going to take this back out of here so we can mount the other end of the ribbon cable into the Raspberry Pi. A little bit easier. Yeah. I realized that as soon as I was finished. How does this case open?
All right, got the camera there. The contacts are on this side. Uh, you should put that through the, the top of the case. I'm glad you're here to help me. I'd just be making all the mistakes. <laughs> Teamwork gets things done. And Patrick Carroll has found a uh, found a listing for a five inch diameter, five foot long, uh, Schedule Forty PVC pipe uh, for thirty three forty four dollars. There you go. Um, Might be able to organize a, a a group buy there on the. I mean the the length you need for this design is only two feet of the pipe, so that's good for that's good for two that's good for two telescopes. Um, although I, I, the, that last uh, foot, foot long remnant wouldn't be good for, for anybody, I wouldn't believe. Um, and the uh, um, John Madden mentions there is no, so the, uh, the mirror is a item that you'll need to purchase on, I believe it's available on Amazon. And as far as the lens, uh, all you'll need to do is buy the Raspberry Pi camera. That's the only thing you'll need. Um, and then the mirror you can purchase on Amazon. Um, if you take a look at the uh, PyCon website, uh, if you look on PyCon, P-I-K-O-N, uh, Google that, you'll find their website. And they also have the rest of the build of materials, build of materials for all the mechanical parts. So this is considered a, a single optic telescope um, in that the mirror is the only actual optical component of the telescope. There is no secondary lens. In fact, as we mentioned earlier, the Raspberry Pi uh, camera comes with the lens that you will be discarding. All right, so the last part of this is to assemble this all into the telescope. Now, if I remember correctly, this works best. Um, I think, actually, you have the handle of the telescope pointing off to the right um, with regards to the, um, the mounting point of the telescope being on the bottom. Um, but we'll get this all fitted in, and then we'll take a look, and we'll make an adjustment if the picture is upside down. Right. Um, that, that's actually one of the suggestions is not to, to really affix things until you've tested everything. Um, get, your, get your picture, get your focus, and then rotate your, your components to get your image right side up. Um, because your, your mounting system may be different. You may be mounting straight down. You may be mounting to the side. Um, we're just using a, a normal... Uh, uh, camera tripod for this, but you know, if you were actually using a uh, uh, a tripod that was actually designed for um, uh, telescopes, then your your mounting point may be different. So don't worry about really locking things down until you've you've really set everything up and given it a try. Yeah. So let's grab that tripod back there. All right. This one is a little lightweight for our needs. Um, a lot of our equipment is already making its way down to the San Mateo Events Center for Maker Faire, uh, but it should be good for our needs. This, the benefit of this design is that it's all 3D printed. It's made of, of basically drain pipe. It's very lightweight. All right, so we have that mounted on the Maybe there's maybe I have this plate in the wrong orientation. I'm not getting good bite on it. Let's try it that way. What is going on to this? I think I see the little thumb screw keeps folding down and not letting it sit flat into the mounting point. And this is why blue painter's tape is invented. 
Yes. Where, where can I find something? Um, let me show the problem that we're dealing with here. Here we go. Is that this little thing we can use to tighten the tripod plate uh, keeps wanting to fold down and get in our way. Problem solved. I wasn't sure if we'd have a troubleshooting segment of this build, but now we have. There we go. Okay, that's a telescope. Now we just need to, to be able to see what the telescope is seeing. We need, of course, our HDMI cable. And we'll need to punch in a couple of commands. For that, we will use this fine keyboard. And finally, we need to give the Raspberry Pi some power. Okay. Now we're just letting the Raspberry Pi boot up here. Uh, John Madden is asking again what OS is needed. Um, the OS that we're running is the standard Raspberry Pi uh, Raspbian OS. Um, it's the one that comes with the most distribution. Or, yeah, it's the one that if you go to raspberrypi.org and download the uh, OS, it is one of the most prominent ones. It's the one that they developed specifically for the Raspberry Pi. It has really great community support, so it's, it's really useful that will increase the expandability of this project a lot, that they, they stuck the Raspbian. Yeah. Now, this project is so simple, there's not even really software to install for it. Um, uh, really, what we're doing here is we're just going to be logging in as the standard Pi account. And it could, um, depending on if you're downloading this, really the only thing you need to do is uh, go into the... Um, the Raspi, the Raspi config command, and really the only thing you need to do to get this thing ready to run is to enable the Raspberry Pi camera. Um, of course, to make your keyboard make sense, you might need to go into the internationalization options, set your correct keyboard layout. We've already done that here. Um, we'll go ahead and say, yes, we want to reboot. So it needs to do a couple things to get the Raspberry Pi camera ready, and then after that, we're ready to um, take a look and see what's what's going, going on, on out, what's going on outside. So one of the one of the really great uh, things about this project that I kind of alluded to is because it is open source, because uh, it is based on the Raspberry Pi, and uh, that there is such a community around that. Uh, this is a really expandable project. It's something that I again I'm starting to play around with and look into. But I would really love to see a community spring up around it. Um, the Raspberry Pi is really being underutilized here, and there's a lot more that we could do. Uh, adding this onto some kind of Dobsonian uh, uh, manipulator to to aim the the telescope so that you could uh, select an item and have it jump right to it. The Raspberry Pi shouldn't have any problem being able to dr to drive something like that. Uh, so there's a lot that we can kind of add onto this system as is. And for people who aren't familiar, what, what is a, including myself, what is a Dobsonian? Dobsonian telescope. So uh, Dobsonian telescopes have a, a, uh, a series of pivots on them that will allow it to be uh, moved around and, and looked, up, looked at certain areas. It's an easy way to mount a telescope. Gotcha. At least I think I have that correct. 
99% possible on that. I was so excited to get this thing running and looking out the window that I started typing in the command that will uh, show us the output of the camera before I'd even logged in yet. Uh, so yeah, to really to just run this, we're running the Raspberry Pi camera capture command, which is Raspi still. Uh, um, probably don't need to capture the image into a file, but uh, and then we're also going to do this dash T and then set the number of seconds we want it to um, preview for. Or actually, the number of, <laughs> pardon me, milliseconds. Um, that translates later into seconds, and I think this is going to show for a good, solid two minutes. Um, and then, F, it's the last command, and we see a very blurry picture. So let's start focusing to see what kind of image we can resolve. Might also be that we're just looking at. Yeah, I think we might have the curtains. You look like you're right. Okay, so we're <laughs> probably pointed. Yeah, now you're starting to see some grass. Also, looks like we're focusing a little bit on some of the leaves. We have leaves. These are the leaves on the trees outside our window. So apologies for the wobbly camera. Try and stabilize this as much as possible. But for sake of reference, I would say that these trees are probably about uh, 200 feet away outside our window. Yeah. And uh, so that gives you a good idea of the amount of, of level of magnification that you're, we're capable of getting with this. Um, I'm going to try and lower the column on this a little bit. It'll probably stabilize things a little bit and keep us from being pointed directly at the uh, out the window or at the window shade. The primary suggestion when when tuning this in is to try it on the moon. Uh, so you know, test trying to tune this in during the day, we're we're kind of focusing, trying to focus on things that are are a bit too close. I think you can definitely see the, the potential here. Oh. oh. We just need to run that command one more time so we can get a little bit more preview time. I'm trying to focus on that wall just past it. I think that's what that black line you see towards the bottom of the image there represents. Yeah. There's a uh, pole there. And I would say that, that that marker there is probably six to eight inches tall. And again, that's uh, probably a good 200 feet uh, away from us here. That's on the other side of the road, isn't it? No, it's on this side of the road. Actually, no, I think it's in the middle of the road. I can't quite tell from here. I can't figure out which pole it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's in the middle of the road. So that's... That's maybe another 30, 40 feet yeah. away? Yeah. I'm going to find out. Huh? I'm going to find out. <laughs> Mike is going to find out for us how far away this is. Um, so, I mean, that's just a really quick look. I mean, obviously this uh, isn't the most optimal setup to demonstrate the capabilities of this, but it's really easy to see the potential of what this thing is capable of. Um, aside from the printing time, this thing assembles super fast. I mean, if you look on the project page on makezine.com, I think it lists 14 to 16 hours. I think that's all entirely print time. Right. Uh, I mean, I printed this uh, large spider last night with the larger one for the, um, the six inch diameter pipe. I want to say, I mean, I was printing this at, at point, oh, point 0.2. Um, you might need this to be a little bit uh, um, thinner layer height. But actually, it's plenty strong at this layer yeah. height. And this was like four hours. And this is one of the more complex parts. Right. There's not a lot of print here. Um, you also can print out 
this, um, where did that little dovetail go? Um, the kit also comes with a uh, dovetail mounting plate for a uh, standard um, uh, and astronomical tripod. Um, those are pretty commonplace if you have that sort of equipment. Um, we don't, so we did this little bracket mounting system and then use some uh, quarter inch aluminum to just uh, tap that so that uh, then I could use it for a standard, uh, standard photographic or videographer, videographer's tripod. Uh, that would make it easier for us to mount in here, but you can also print up the, um, the, the normal uh, <clears throat> dovetail for the, the, um, for the astro astronomer's tripod. Right. Uh, keep getting those fumbled yeah. up in my brain. Uh, but anyhow, so this is an awesome project. Um, we love it. Uh, we hope you'll go on and build it. And uh, again, we're also super grateful to DigiKey for making this series possible and, uh, and making it making it. Uh, making the parts available for us. If you check the link that was uh, posted in here, you can buy, there's a shopping cart already ready for you to purchase all the electronic components you need to purchase uh, this project. And then, then you can go and purchase all the mechanical stuff, the mirror, and then you're ready to build you're this project. Go. You're ready to see amazing stuff in our solar system. Right. First one of you guys that turns this into an IoT telescope uh, and sends us a link, we will uh, get your telescope up. Uh, yeah. and out there so people can can stare at the stars through your telescope with you. Yeah, can't wait to see that. And um, also things that we cannot wait to see. Um, if you're here in the Bay Area, I really hope you're coming out this weekend to Bay Area Maker Fair in San Mateo. If you're not here in the Bay Area, uh, we are going to be doing a live stream of pretty dang near the entire fair, or at least everything that we can fit into uh, you know, 17 hour, you know, 16, 17 hours of broadcast time over the course of the weekend. And you can catch that, not here, not here on Facebook, but over on our uh, Twitch page, over on Twitch Creative, and that is twitch.tv slash make. Um, we're going to be streaming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you can go ahead and lay, take a look on, those, on that site to get a rough idea of our schedule. Some things will be changing over the course of the weekend, but there's a lot of really cool stuff that we're super excited to see. And uh, we hope you will join us. Um, but in the meantime, thank you, Matt, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for your awesome uh, comments and questions. And uh, we will see you in the next uh, Make Life Build. And once again, thanks to DigiKey for making this series possible. And uh, thanks for being here. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks.